handling digital evidence with open source forensic tools. In case you're interested on forensic, digital forensic, gathering electronic evidence on various devices are important. Not only forensic, if you are intelligent gathering professional and want to gather intelligence from digital devices, it, it is very important to find it out how to do that. In this presentation, I'm teaching you or showing or demonstrating how to gather electronic evidence from devices, especially from memory and the hard disk. When you want to do such evidence gathering, obviously, there are several commercial tools. This demonstration and the presentation where I would like to show you how to gather digital evidence using open source tools. So when you think about the tools the train, you can see quite a lot of Windows tools, Windows tools, Windows based tools, and some tools works on Windows and Linux based both operating systems. Especially we focus on forensic open source tools. So mainly open source tools available on Linux based operating systems. Mandos, Auto Spy is very popular among the forensic scientists. Especially when you're selecting a forensic tool to your to study or to use in your use case or your investigation. There are several criteria to be considered. You need to think about the cost of the tools. You need to think about the size of the data you're going to analyze. You need to think about whether when you're using that tool, whether there are any side effects and whether it collected evidence properly or it is partially collected the evidence and so on. The most importantly, you need to make sure this tool gives you the same results on multiple runs. So that's the most important, especially when you use a forensic tool and let's say you extracted some evidence and next time when you try the same tool on same data, you get a different set of evidence. So that tool is not good. So what you need is the tool which reliable produce the result. As I mentioned, in the, in the market, we can see several commercial tools available, such as MKS, FTK, Oxygen, and many more. So those, most of the tools are really expensive to use, and sometimes, did not work. Buying those tools are really 
So those same tasks can be carried out using open source tools. Those open source tools used by using by the professionals from the history to right now, some of those tools are very reliable and we could produce fantastic result from those tools. So in this presentation, I would like to consider several such tools such as grep, md 5 strings, lines, SFE, and such many more tools. Among those tools we can use to gather the evidence, grep is the great tool help us in many cases. As some of you know, there is a command line utility for searching plain text. And it can be used to search for regular expression as well. So this grab tool developed of 45 years ago by Linux authors, main Unix operating system author, actually not Linux, Unix operating system author, Ken Thompson, in 1974, 45 years ago, this tool was developed. We are using it without big changes even today. So that shows how reliable this tool is. We don't need to do any bug fixing for that tool for 45 years. It produced reliable result. So if you are familiar with that tool, you might understand why it is so great. In order to show you the power of graph, I will use simple case. So let's assume some criminal has released list of email addresses. So that's criminal attack the your system or whatever. We have no idea about that, assume but he has released some email data. So you, you are an investigator and would like to know about whether your company mails or your organization mails exist in that public list. So if that list consists of millions of mails, checking few of your organization mails, whether it exists on that list or not, manual is impossible. So grep will source that issue in fantastic way. So using that, you can easily search huge files and find it out whether that file consists of some data you interest on. Let's see how we can do that. Okay. As you see now, so I have started my terminal here. So directory called case. Uh, and I go to my 
first example here is one. There has, you see several files in this directory. One of the files, let's say, emails. This file consists of thousands of email addresses which has released by a criminal. So, I have another file, let's say, this, this one. Right. So, my email, this file, my email is, It has list of my contacts or list of my interesting emails. I want to find it out whether one of the, any contact in my list is exposed into this hacker list. For that, the command I want to use is grab in this form. I say grab. Grab. Minus Z. Minus BST. And then tells the huge list I want to show. Greg will compare these two lists and tells us which emails in this exist on that. So you see it's searching. So far this three has exist in this list. Right. Like that. You can use the grep command to compare any huge files. Even you can use pattern matching with the grep command. As you may see, I'm used Mac operating system. Some of you might have Windows. But most of these commands are Unix-based commands. So your operating system or your machine may not have this. I give a simple solution for that. So I created simple Docker file. I will show you. Here. So with this Docker file, I install a minimum version of Ubuntu and then add the commands which are useful, like win, jit, uh, decode, homos, hopper, md5, scp, and obviously sometimes we need gcc. Great like commands are built to the voice. The minimum Ubuntu OS. So I don't need to install it separately. So I can build that Docker image and then run that Docker using uh, this command. I can run Docker run minus V. When I run that, I map my local directory cases to the home of this Docker image and name that as CDA and run it in the pre-relation. Pre so you see, I get the Docker file. So when I change that to the root, 
so now I'm at the same directory as in my host machines. So this is my Docker, this is my host machine. So I go to the same directory. Uh, yeah, I am showing this case one. Right, so in both, I'm at the same place. So I move to case one. So this is Ubuntu. This is Mac prompt. This is Mac prompt. This is Ubuntu prompt. So, so there I can run grep. Grep minus F. My email list and search for that. You see? So it's produced the same result. So okay, this table tool where it produce the same results. So sometimes grep tool is used to execute regular expressions. So for example, so if you have some contact sheets, let's say VFX, VCEF files, contact files extracted from your mobile phone. So these contacts files formats something like that, comma separated files. Right? It has so many information, it has phone numbers and so on. So assume from that, I want to extract email addresses. How do I do that? For that, again, graph is very important too. So for example, I can execute this command here to extract email addresses from this list of contacts. So for example, I say graph minus Z, and give a regular expression where I search for email addresses from these contacts. And let's execute that. You see this regular expression extracted all emails from that. Then if I can write that actually to a file, let's say my email or something like that my email is so now it contains my contents so that can be check against the criminal email list which is downloaded from the internet so this is list. like that using the same to prep tool so there what i found is so these three emails, which is available in my contact as exposed to the internet by a criminal. So as you see, I use simple rep to do that. Throughout the other examples, I'm practicing rep, rep tool, rep tool to show. And then you should understand will understand the strength of that simple command. Right. right. So when you do forensic special, first step of the forensic is to extract the data from your hard disk or SIM card or USB drive. After you extracted that, then you can do the evidence gathering. One of the tools available in the Unix-based operating system to data extraction from low level are the DB. You may heard about that too. DD command will copy the data in from one device to the other device to a file sector level 
So if you are a forensic investigator, open source intelligent gathering professional, and you have get some SIM card or phone number or USB drive where you want to examine about existing data as well as digital data, first action you should do it. Make an exact copy of this device. So the command used for that is DD is the open source dot command. So one of the person who works for US Defense called James Conlum, somewhere in 2008, alter that DD command a little bit to create a little advanced DD command called DC3DD. DC3 DD is actually the DD command, but it can automatically calculate hash of the data which is extracted. Why it is important? We use hash to maintain chain of custody of electronic evidence. We want to show the data we extracted has not changed during the investigation process. For that, we use hash value. So in case you use DD to extract data, so after extraction, the data, you have to then execute hash calculation commands like MD5, SOSH1, to get the hash of the data you acquire. So then you have to wait two bytes once to create the DD and then to calculate the hash to the long time in case the large hard disk. So instead of using DD and hash commands separately, you can use DC3DD at one go. So there you can execute this command DC at 3D and give the input device and then give output file. And after that, you can give the hash algorithm you want to use. Then what happened, this DC3DD command will read that file and DD entire data to this single DD file, raw data file. And while copying, it calculate the hash of that data. So it produces such output here, saying this much of data is extracted and hash of this data is this. So then you can make a note on this hash and use that to prove you have not altered those information during the investigation. So instead of DD, you can use DC3DD. So that will simplify your life. So DC3DD is not straightforward available in the Unix base for the Mac OS. There you have to install using apt get install command. After that, you can use it to extract the data. I have installed DC3DD in this Docker VM, however, Docker running on the virtual machine and will not give direct access, even in the privilege mode, to your devices. So if you want to extract the data from the devices, that must be done. Not using the Docker image, but using your host operating system, which has the access to the device in directly, and it is much faster doing it. Let me show you how to do that. I'll use my host OS 
this is Mac OS to demonstrate that. So the required Unix commands also given. So let's say I have a SIM card where I, in that SIM memory card, I want to extract the data using in the raw format. So this utility available in the Mac command, Mac operating system, I used to list the devices attached to my device. You see, this one is my hard disk. So I insert, inserted now the memory card into the slot. So, and I run this, this utility, you see that memory card has mounted as this two. So one GP SIM card to my host operating system. So I want to extract entire SIM card for examination, right? So let me move to some temporary directory called case two. Yes, one is two. So let's say I am there, it has some. If I previously execute, I will right. So there is a directory. I have some DD files where I extracted some other image, which require power demonstration. And there are no other data in this directory. And then I have the disk uh, SIM card inserted to this one. So I want to now get the data from the SIM card. In order to get the data, first of all, I have to unmount that. So I execute unmount command here. This two. Okay, I need to give, maybe I copy from the device. This two should be. It's a very nice one. I already unmounted. I didn't notice that. So then I run that list. Anyway, when I run, it shows the list, but it says I want to unmount this. Okay, it says already unmounted. So that's fine. You what you have to do is you unmount it. Then you have to run this command. So we are you going to extract the data? You say so. Then DC three so two this. EC3 DD, this one. I'll copy that in. Anyway. 
And here, my device is device is to my input device. My output device, I say maybe P3 DT, and my hash value is SH day 256. Right. So when I execute that, you see it started extracting the data from my SIM card and writing into the file called this in my hard disk. So let it extract and move on our lecture. Right? So in case you want to do any 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 investigation, first step is that extracting the data. Right. After you extract the data, what should you do? You have to then work with the files, right? So some files may already are deleted by the criminal. So you have to recover them. How do you recover the files from the DD image? The simple tool where you can use to recover the data from the given DD image is foremost. So that also a 20 hole tool which, which works very reliably even today. You can use Informost and extract the data from any these images. You see now my data is extracted. And this is the 256 hash value of the data extracted. So that data has written into this file, image file. Let me see the size of that. It's around, you see, one GB. Right. So data extraction part has done. So let me move to the same folder using my Docker image. So I'm at the same folder. This file appears here. So now I want to use foremost tool to extract the information. So assume I want to extract all the JPEG files, all image files, JPEG image files uh, from the uh, from the uh, hard disk or right from the image. What do I do? So this is the command I want to type, want to give. So I'm anyway at the Docker image because it, with the root privilege, so I can directly execute almost with minus T option, I can give which files I want to extract, say JPEG files using a minus I, I can give an image name, that's the image which I has taken right now. With the output option minus so I can tell which folder I want to put that. So I'm creating a folder called JPG. Extract all the JPEG files from the image 
and put it into that particular fold. So four months four, we'll go through that this image and we'll extract all deleted and rest of the files, whatever the files are available. Even if take the deleted file. So I'm executing on the case two. So you see, so this is, it created the file called JPEG, directory called JPEG. Right? Under that, it created another file called JPEG and it extracted all images in that SIM card. So there are some images might deleted, some images exist. So, okay, done, all the files are extracted. You see, let's put it under that. So I recovered entire JPEG files in this, this image. Similarly, by giving the file type I can extract, or oh, I can extract entire files, entire files using without giving that option, just using I like that. So I see almost minus I. Giving T option, you see. Here, no T with the T option. I can give the time without using that. I can extract everything. As I, this image name, and I can the directory called all. So then, this almost will extract all data. From that given image. So when I execute that, you might see under case two, it creates a directory called all. And under all, it created a directory's type of the files that he can understand. AVI files, EMP files, DLL, doc files, docx files, exes, gif files, JPEG files, you see, so there is one AVI files which is extracted and movie files, still not, MP4 files, so like that, whatever the zip files available in that directory will extract it, still it's under extracting process, so it go through the entire image and examine deleted and undeleted all files and extract them and put it into those directories. You see here now, and on the case to all. So finally in that actually he found only AVIs this tool found only AVIs and JPEGs. So he has tried several of file types you see at the beginning, but he only found these two types and the rest of the directories he deleted, the tool deleted, and it left only these AVI files and JPEG files. So these are the files available in that image. Similarly, I can run that if I wish in my other DC image, DC, uh, my CMBD as well. So like that, any image, I can run the foremost command. Right. So if you are recovering PDF files, I recommend to use a tool called scaffold 
that tool can be used to recover any other file as well. It works same as the foremost. So how to use that? Maybe I will show you. Uh, so I go to the S3 directory. I have some images you see. This, this image, sample image. So I want to use this tool. Scale this one. And using that, I would like to see whether this, this image has PDF files. If I want to do that, uh, first of all, I want to tell the tool, I want uh, PDF. How do I do that? I have to manually edit scale file configuration. This file. In the configuration, if you look at, there are several config options among them it has file types so you see if you want to like gif files you have to uncomment these gif lines if you want jpeg you have to uncomment jpeg lines png these lines gif files and animation files these are the files which understand recovered by this particular tool so word files it can recover uh, mail files, uh, HTML files, Adobe. I'm interested in Adobe lessons. So if I'm interested in Adobe, I uncomment in these two lines like that. And then write it. So after that, I run this command. I say, And I can give a device name if device is mounted. Or I can give a image name like here as well. And then say output, put it into this. It has extracted PDF files available in that directory as in the output. So you see, this is the image. It created the four file for loud and it create extracted PDFs available in this image where you can then examine some PDF files. I don't know what it is, but you can see. So they have extracted some PDF from this given PD image. So I recommend Scalpel to, to extract the document files such as PDFs. In the image files, foremost works much faster. Right. My next example, MD5D. If you are familiar with Unix based operating system and you want to calculate hash values, you know, we have MD5, SSJ1 like commands. So using those commands, you can calculate hash values of individual files. But if you want to calculate hash values of all files in the directory recursively, one after other, one directory inside the other directory. So you cannot use MD5 or SSJ1 command. Instead, you have to use MD5D. MD5D commands useful to maintain the integrity or to check whether the files which get altered. Plus, it is important that we can use that file to find similar files. 
assume you have extracted some data from suspected pen drive and then you and that might have some pictures as i demonstrated in my previous examples then i want to find it out whether some of my pictures exist on that suspects sim drive obviously i can manually go through that but if it has thousands of image files i cannot go manually then md5 deep command would be very useful there what we should i do let me show you so i go to my next case i want to find the similar files using md5 deep So you see, I have some image files, and I have some directory. Assume that directory consists of some images where I am interested on. So my case four directory. So you see, there are few images, three images in that file. Right. So I have extracted now. some pictures from the suspect sim card so now what i want to find it out whether that extracted file consists of this known file right for that first of all i need to go through my extracted directory and calculate it they are hash values so for that i am using md5 deep so i extracted on the case two and it has jpeg directory and i want to do recursively calculate hash values you see it go through all images in this directory and print out the hash values of the files images which i extracted so on the terminal so i need to put them into a hard disk file let's say photo md5 then all hash values are saved in that file so you see right now what i want to do that where i want to check whether the files in this 2009 directory is exist on that hashes or that extract files so if i want to check that i run in the file d minus r and and minus m and give my hash file this this just created and give the suspected persons directory which i extract like that so it should show me okay okay i made the mistake sorry it's so i actually i check again the same directory what i want to check whether hashes of this available in 2009 this so you see it shows me 
these three hash of these three images exist on these hashes. So they are enormous. These files exist there. So you see, previously I run this. So actually, I created a photos hashes, photo.md file against this directory. That means all the files in the directory actually matches with those hashes. So that's what I, not I want to do. I calculate the hashes, files, hash of the files in this directory and save it in this file. And then run md 5 deep against these hashes and this 2009 directory, my directory. Then that tells me whether these three files in my directory exist in this hash as well. So it's say actually these three exist. Maybe I can move some other files to that like here. So then there are four files and run that. So you see in the fourth file is not in the suspect directory. So only these three. So then I know, so some, somebody has taken my photos, something like that. So that's how md 5 deep works. You can even directly mounting uh, images, these images like here, and execute this md 5 deep command. Right, as if it is. This is very useful tool when you analyze the images, especially to get metadata from those images. So SAP tool is also a very old tool developed 2003, still it will produce very reliable results. It can be used to extract various information, such as uh, the camera details, uh, latitudes, latitudes, that is location, and other details on the email. Let me see how to use that. So I move to case five, where I have some images, S1, S2, S3, like that. So I run SCP tool. Let's say S1, S1 dot okay. So you see when I run that, it's extract all the metadata in this file. So you see how much of metadata available in the image file. So file size, time of taken, the name, and then uh, kind of modified it, size, and focal length, contrast, and so many other data. So you see, so many other data about them. Even it include, this particular image include GPS position, the location that photo has taken. So if you want to get exact, only this line extracted, so you can run this command. I'll copy that for simplicity. So like that. And say S1, right? 
So you see, longitude is this. So similarly, I can get longitude and latitude both if I want to see like this. I use as if we take this data and use that. So I take all latitude and latitude values of all files and pipe into graph and get that information. So you see, latitude values of the all photos in this directory. These locations, latitude and longitude, latitude both actually. So basically, these are the locations some of these files take. So if you want to see the location, actually I can use Google map and then take that degree and just put it to the Google map, it pinpoint the place where this photo has taken. Like that you can get so many other information. So even you can use this SFE tool to organize uh, extracted data. So you have data and if you want to kind of uh, organize them into a time of the time of this data taken or the date of the taken like that based on the original data available in the image. Date, original date take available in the image. So for example, you can run this command and see what's happened. I, I have to do the directly. Oh, sorry. I... You see, I execute this command, SFA tool. And I want to organize this photos in this directory. Actually, previously there are no temporary directory in my uh, folder, even though it is empty. So that's why I say no files. So I extracted some files and put it in the case too, you know, in previous demo. So I want to create it, those files organize that files based on the date of creation. So you see now what's happened. So you see this is the extracted files. This foremost tool extracted those files and put it like, you see it's like um, some numbers. Now they have SAP tool renamed with this image name. Uh, it's renamed the image name based on the Date statement. So then I can easily go through that. Not only that, I can put them into a nicely into the separate directories by giving this. Giving this command. So there are my image directories. Is two JPEG, JPEG. Now the files in that directory will be organized based on the date. SAP tool can use to reorganize the image. It can be 
use to kind of extract the metadata. So this is the folder. which has these images. I made a mistake, you see, it's, it's I, File name now I want to organize into directory it should be direct. Then I have to do is to right. So it's previously file name. So it reorganized the entire files using file names. Now it use origin date time or you know, to put it the images into directories and see what happens now after executing this you see now all the image files here updated into the directory should be what happened mm -hmm. okay, directory is created to create them here. Where did they create the directory? Maybe something went wrong. Let's see. Should create a set of directories here. Okay, it's created uh, under this. So you see, it was before two thousand nine, now two thousand ten. You see under my case five directory, not the case four. So I'm under case five directory. It created the directory called 2010 and then month and then date. So you see all the images which is previously in this folder, JPEG, JPEG folder, move into this. So I am, and there you see case file 2010 here. So all the files nicely organized, JPEG files. You see a CIFI tool can extract uh, location data, camera data, and also it can use to uh, extract, organize the directories in the file structure. Uh, 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 it could be organized the images into the directory structure. Right. So then let's assume 
if you are about to arrest the machine of a suspect and uh, they are one important thing you have to do is copy the memory of that machine because sometimes important data such as the password to login into the suspect uh, Gmail accounts or any other on online accounts may be available in the memory. How do you extract a memory of the device? There's a very interesting module available in for line to extract memories from Android based phones plus uh, Linux operating systems, Linux based operating systems, Unix based operating systems. Uh, memory can be extracted using this line tool. Similarly, there are some tools available for Windows as well, memory dumping tools. So using this line tool, you can dump uh, device memory into the raw data file, DD file, or the specific format called line format or the line file. In case you want to, let's assume you want to dump a memory of a Linux machine. So this line tool available to install using uh, apt get install minus file line forensic dkms module. So you execute this command, uh, apt install command, and install line forensic dkms. It will install line module on your Unix machine. Or as you can download this source from this JIT page and compile a line module for the target device. So if you want to calculate, the, if you want to extract the memory of the Linux, Unix based device, you can just install it and use it. If you want to, let's say, extract the memory of the Android device. So then you have to get the source and compile that into the target and to induce. After that, you have to move that memory module to the OS and dump the entire memory into a file. How do you do that? In a Unix based operating system, there is a command called insert module. It's in this insert module command, you can insert this line KO or the line module into the memory and give the path to store that. So you see this option path equal, you give a file name to save the memory and the format you want to save. Format is line, it's actually their own format. You can use DD like whatever the format supported by this line. After you execute this command, what's happened? Entire memory of the Linux device saved to a file called main. So it has the copy of the memory there. So you, then you can search through that memory to find out the interesting data, such as password or any other confidential data. In order to search such huge file, you can use the string command. Then you give a string and this huge file, it tells you all the strings available where you might interest on like email address, phone numbers, passwords and so on. So those strings then can pass to grep for pattern matching. So for example, you can say grep password equal from this memory strings. So it tells passwords maybe like Google. So steps are, you first get the memory extractor, then convert then that memory into strings. That means all the data strings available in this memory dump will save into the string file and then use grep to search through that string. So you can use grep and do kind of like regular expression matchings. 
Like using this, you can grab and see the phone numbers. Using this grab command, you can see specific email address. And using this, you can extract all email address stored in memory and so on. Like that, you can play with the memory. So in case you are arresting a suspect's device, you have to dump the memory before shutting down. Because if you shut down those valuable information available in that memory, it will destroy it. So what you have to do before shut down, you dump the memory, and then you copy that memory file into a, some other device and dump it. Later on, you can use string and grep command to analyze that. As you see how powerful the grep and string, DD, FOMOS, so all of them are open source tools. So as the last note, I can point it out as an important open source forensic toolkit called SalutKit. So with the cellular kit, you, you could do many more. So I'm not going to detail of cellular kit. So you search on that and you can study that. So it has so many interesting additional tools, which can be used to study or extract evidence from the storage devices and the memory. With that, I could like to conclude that presentation. Thank you very much for listening so far. In this session, what I want to highlight is the importance of open source software to extract the data from devices.